today's lesson, we are going to solve and graph inequalities. So when you solve an inequality, you are going to solve it just like an equation. So we are going to use those same rules that we used last week when we solved equations. So the first step is you want to see if the inequality can be simplified. So if we look to the left side, we cannot do 2y plus 7. They're not like terms. If we look on the right side, it's just an 11. So step 1, we skip. Step 2, I'm going to highlight, I'm going to cover up the variable. And I do that because that helps me know where to start. I'm going to start there because I want this by itself. So to get rid of a positive 7, we're going to subtract 7. So we get 2y is greater than 4. And then the very last step is to divide by itself. So we're going to divide by 2. That's going to cancel because 2 divided by 2 is 1y. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this is our answer. And then we're going to graph it. So just a review from yesterday. To graph, if it's not equal to, it doesn't have an equal to symbol, then I'm going to leave the circle open because 2 can't go back in for y. Then I'm going to read this. This says y is greater than 2. And y stands for all the answers. So I need to shade all the answers, all the numbers that y can be that are greater than 2. So just as a review on a number line, numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger as you go to the right. And as you go to the left, they get smaller and smaller and smaller. So I need to shade where the numbers are greater. So I'm going to shade to the right because the right numbers, the numbers on the right are greater. Okay. Then if I wanted to check, I'm going to take the original problem. And instead of a y, I'm going to plug in a number that's over here, that's in the shaded. Because all the numbers that are shaded are all numbers that y can be that are greater than 2. So I'm going to pick 4. And if I plug in a 4 here, Two times four is eight. Eight plus seven is fifteen. Fifteen is greater than eleven. It works. So I picked a number on the side that shaded, plugged it back in, and it worked. That's how I know I should have shaded the right side. Okay, let's take a look at the next example. Okay, so I'm going to use those same steps for equations. I'm going to simplify. So if I look to the left, I can't combine these terms. One has an x, one doesn't. So I'm going to look on the right side. I can't simplify a negative one. It's by itself. So number two is I'm going to highlight the variable term. And I'm going to get rid of this 11 by subtracting 11. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do on the other side of the inequality. Negative 1 and negative 11 make negative 12. Okay, then the very last step. When this is a by itself, we're going to divide by negative 4. However, in class, we talked about that if you divide both sides by a negative, and what we're doing here is we're dividing by negative 4. And in class, we talked about 
when solving an inequality, solve it just like an equation. But if you divide or multiply both sides by a negative, which we are, we're dividing by a negative 4, we need to reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. And in class, we did proofs on the board. So we need to switch the symbol to go the other way. So now the x is by itself. That's what we wanted. And negative 12 divided by negative 4 is positive 3. Okay, then we're going to graph it. And since it's not equal to, we're going to leave the circle open. Okay, then we're going to read this. This says x is less than 3. Less sounds like less. Less, less. So we need to shade the left side because that's the left side on a number line. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller as we go to the left. So we need to shade to the left. So then if I check this, and if I check this, I'm going to prove that this will work if I switch this. Because when I switch this, it now makes x less than 3. If I didn't switch it, it would be greater than 3 which would be this side. So I'm going to pick a number over here, and I'm going to take my original problem. I'm going to take this problem, and I'm going to plug in a 2, because that's in the shaded side. So I'm going to go back into the problem and plug in a 2. So negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Bring down the 11. 11 minus 8 is 3. It works. 3 is greater than negative 1. So by switching it, it got me these numbers, not these ones. So anytime you divide by a negative or multiply both sides by a negative, you need to reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at another example. Let's look at example three. Okay, so here's our steps. So step one, I'm going to simplify. So I'm going to look to the left. And we can definitely simplify on the left. We can combine the 4x and the 2x. And 4x plus 2x is 6x. So that was step one, simplify. But we can't simplify on this side. Okay. Then, the next step is we're going to cover up the variable term. And we're going to get rid of this positive 6. So we're going to subtract 6, take away 6 from 6. Negative 12 and negative 6, they're the same signs. Look in front of the bigger number. This makes negative 18. Okay, then the very last step. When the variable is by itself, we're going to divide by 6. So we are dividing by a positive number. We're dividing by positive 6, so we don't need to switch the sign. We're going to leave it the same. Now we're going to graph it. And this says x is greater than or equal, that's why we colored in the circle, because it could equal, that's what that line means, negative 3. So the numbers that are greater are on the right side. So this is telling you, any number over here on the right could be plugged back in for x and make this side 
greater than or equal to negative 12. Okay, let's do one last problem. So example four, let's go with um, x over negative five plus six is greater than or equal to three. So step one is to simplify. Combine like terms, distribute, which we can't. Can't simplify the right. So now I'm going to highlight the variable. And I'm going to get rid of what's next to it. So I'm going to subtract 6. Six is bigger, so negative. They're different, so I'm subtracting. Okay. Then the last step is to divide by itself. Now, this is a fraction. We have a numerator and a denominator. Okay? So instead of dividing, dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So if we have a 1 and a negative 5, the reciprocal is when you flip-flop these. You reverse them. So the negative 5 is going to go here, and the 1 goes down here. So I need to multiply both sides by negative 5 over 1. The reason why we have to do that is because negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. And the reason why we do that is because it makes 1. We want 1x left by itself. So these cancel. Whatever I do to this side, I have to do on this side. So if I multiply by negative 5, on this side, because negative 5 over 1 is the same thing as negative 5, which equals negative 5, then I need to multiply this side by negative 5. And if you want to put the 1 underneath, that's up to you. But I'm multiplying both sides by a negative. So when solving an inequality, if you divide or multiply by a negative, which we are, we're multiplying by negative 5, we need to switch the symbol. Okay, and then to graph it, we're going to shade in the circle because it could equal 15. And then we read this. This says x is anything less than or equal, that's why it's shaded in, because it could equal 15. So the left side is the left side. 